What's up everybody and welcome to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can make your very own video game without writing any single line of code. And you should be able to run this on your mobile devices, computers, and even your Xboxes and Playstations if you want to. We're gonna start with a simple game today, but you should be able to take some of the principles that I'm showing you today to create even more advanced games. And by the end of this video, you should be able to create the following game right here. Check this out. Game over. All right, I'm back here in the studio and we're gonna get started with the tutorial shortly. Before we do, if you need to download the software, I'm gonna put a link to it in the description. You can download the free version. That's all you need to follow on along with this tutorial. I also have an overview tutorial that I did on the software. I do recommend you check that out. A link to that will be right here. And I'm also gonna put that in the description for you to check out. But the main thing you need to remember from that tutorial is there are three components with Game Maker that you need to know about. The first is a sprite. And a sprite is simply all the visual elements you use in your game. So all your images. Those are called sprite and then also we have something called an object an object is where you put all the logic for your game so if you need to program anything or code any logic you put that within an object and finally we have a room and this is your play area this is where you build out all your levels and this is what your eventual the players are gonna see this once you export your game so now that we have that out of the way let's get started with the tutorial come on all right so I have game maker open here the first thing you want to do is click on create new project it gives you the option for drag and drop and also game maker language Game Maker language, it's its own internal programming language. But well, we're gonna start with the drag and drop. And as you get advanced, you can move to using the Game Maker language to write more advanced games and get into coding. So I'm gonna click on the drag and drop option and give my project a cool name. All right, so I have the software open here. The very first thing I wanna show you how to do is how to create your sprite in the software. Now, that's quite simple to do. If you look to the right, you're gonna see your asset browser. All you have to do is scroll down to the sprites folder, right click, go to create, and click on sprites. You can name this whatever you want, but it's always good to start with the word SRP just to denote that this is a sprite whenever you're trying to use this in other parts of the software. So we're gonna start with our background. So I'm gonna call this background. And to the left here, you're going to see it opens your sprite window. So what we're going to do is click on import. And then I'm going to look at my background and I have it already here downloaded. And I'm going to click on yes. And there we go. We have our very first sprite, which is the sprite of our background imported into the game. Next, I'm going to go ahead and import the sprite for our player. So, and for our player, I'm gonna be using this cartoonized version of myself. So, and if you'd like to create one of these for yourself, I do have a tutorial that shows you how to create something very close to this. So, I'm gonna put a link to that tutorial again in the description. Check it out and you can try this out for yourself. Now that we have our sprites created, the next thing we wanna do is create our very first object. And once again, if we go to our asset browser, just right click on the objects, go to create, and you're gonna see something that says object. And just like the sprite also, I'm gonna start with the word OBJ just to denote that it's an object. And I'm gonna call this player. We're gonna start with the object of our player. So now if you go back to the left, you're going to see that it's created an instance of that object. And by default, objects don't have visibility. To make them visible, you have to attach a sprite to them. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is right here on the sprite, I'm gonna click here where it says no sprite and open the sprites folder and select our player sprite for our object. And we're gonna leave it at that for now. We're gonna come back to program more things into our object as we go along in the game. This is taking some shape already. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and create a room so we can start putting our players and the component in the room. Remember I talked about that in the beginning of the tutorial. So let's go ahead and do that. So by default, the game comes with a room already created in it. And this is our main room. If you wanna add a new room, you should already know what to do by now. Just right click on the room folder and go to create and it has the option to create a room. For now, I'm gonna use the existing room. I'm just gonna rename it to give it a better name to suit the game. So I have our very first room opened here and as you can see it's all black so the very first thing we want to do is go ahead and attach our background to this room and that's quite simple to do if you go right here to the left you see where it says background just click on that and then right here at the bottom where it says no sprite again like we did for the object we're going to attach a sprite to this and as you can guess we're going to use our background sprite for this. 
So if you notice, it's all stretched out um, and it, because our background is too big. So to make it fit within the room, we just simply click on the stretch option here. I'm also going to tile it so that in the case that we're scrolling our background, it always loops the background. So the next thing I'm going to do is add my object in to the room and that's quite simple to do right here on the asset browser where we have the object i'm just going to click and drag and drop the object into the room it's going to ask you to create an instance of this object and i'm going to click on create so by default as you can see our object is very big because of uh the image was big so i'm going to hold control on my keyboard and scroll the mouse wheel just to zoom out here to see it properly and then i'm just going to go to the edge right here and drag this to resize it to fit properly to where it looks reasonable in the game and then i can hold control again and scroll the mouse wheel button to zoom in and if your mouse does not have a wheel you can also use the zoom out and zoom in option right here at the top all right so far so good this is actually looking pretty good already so the next thing we want to do is add some actions and fun to the game so the game comes a little bit more to life so the first thing i want to do is add uh, the forward movement for our player and what i'm going to do is actually not make the player move but just make our background move backwards to create that illusion that the player is moving and to make your background move it's quite simple if you go to the left panel here just make sure you're again you're on the background layer and then if you scroll down to the bottom right here you're going to see where it says horizontal speed now if you put a positive number here your background is gonna move forward and if you put a negative number the background is gonna move backwards since we want it to look like the player is actually moving we're gonna make the background move backwards so I'm gonna put a negative number and I'm gonna put like negative 15 now if I go ahead to the top here and click on play let's see what that looks like so as you can see the background is moving backwards and it creates that illusion that our player is moving forward so so far our game is already starting to look like a game All right, now that we have that forward movement, the next thing we want to do is add now some actions to the actual player so that the player can actually start doing things within our game. So there are a number of steps involved in this, but I'll show you everything you need to know step by step. The first thing you need to do is open up your player object by going to your asset browser. Just make sure you open the objects folder and double click on player and that reopens back your player object. So to program your object in Game Maker, there are two concepts you need to understand. The first is the concept of an event. An event is simply means when something happens within the game. So for example, when I press the keyboard key or when the player touches something, that's just called an event. The next is what is called an action. So an action is what you want to happen whenever an event occurs. So you typically put your actions within an event. An example is I want if the space bar is pressed, I want my player to jump. So I'm going to put a space bar event and then the action will be the jump action so that's simple so now let me show you how to, how to do that within the software itself so if i go right here to add event you're going to see several events and there are events for many things but the one i'm uh interested in is the one that says on key down and the key that i want when it's pushed down is the space bar so i'm going to click on that and that brings up your actions panel so in our case i said i want the player to jump whenever i press space bar luckily we have an action for jump right here in the search box and then it has here where it says jump to a point so i'm going to drag and drop that right here into the space here so to understand how the jump works think of your room as a graph if you did geometry in school so you have the x-axis and the y-axis so i want our player to go up so i really just want it to move uh negative on the y-axis so right here on my y-axis i'm going to put the value of negative three zero all right, let's go ahead and run the game to see what this looks like. To run your game, you simply hit the play button right here at the top of the window. So I have the game opened here and if I press the space bar key, as you can see, our player moves to about negative 30 on the Y axis. But I want something else to happen. I want the player to be able to jump higher depending on how long they press the space bar. And it's quite simple to do that. I'm gonna close this out and then I'm gonna check on the relative button right here. So it means that the player is always gonna to move to negative 30 relative to where the player currently is. So let me go back and run this to see what this looks like. So I have the game running once more and this time around if I press and hold on space bar, you can see that the player goes up and goes all the way up infinitely. The reason why the player is not coming back down is because we do not have the concept of gravity in the game. So let's go ahead and add some gravity in the game so that it pulls the player back down whenever the player is up. 
So to do this, I'm going to go back to the player object and I'm going to add another event, which is called the create event. And this event is triggered whenever the player is created for the first time in the game. And I want what I wanted to do is simply add some gravity to the game. And luckily there is an action for that that's called set gravity. So I'm going to search for that and it's right here, set gravity force. And I'm going to drag and drop that in here. And I'm just going to have it have a force of one and that should be enough to get the player coming down and act more naturally. All right, so before we actually run the game, there's one last thing we need to do. We need to add a ground to the game. So the game doesn't have a ground right now. Uh, it just looks like it has a ground because of the background image that we put on it. If I actually go ahead and take out that background image, then our player is actually just hanging up in the air. So we're going to go add a ground so that whenever our player touches the ground, the player stops moving. And to do that, um, it's quite simple. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add a new sprite so I'm gonna create a new sprite and call that my ground and this time around I'm not gonna import an image I'm just gonna use the inbuilt editor and just do use the paint fill tool right here and just click in right here to just put a white image so I just need something that acts as a ground so the white image is good enough so I'm gonna go also and create a new object for this ground and for its sprite like we did the first time I'm gonna add the sprite of the ground to the object and I'll make sure to check that it's a solid object so that the game knows about when the player touches it, it shouldn't sort of pass through it. And then I'm gonna do one more thing. I'll go back to my player object and I'm gonna add a collision event. So the event, collision event happens whenever an object touches another object. So I'm gonna say collusion and the collusion with the ground. And the simple thing I just wanted to do is reduce the gravitational speed to zero so that it stops falling down. And there's a uh, action for that which is set speed which is right here i'm going to click and drag on that and just make it set the speed to zero so that our player stops falling whenever it touches it's touching the ground the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and put that ground object in the room so i have the ground object right here i'm just going to drag it and drop it in and create a new instance and if you hold alt on your keyboard or option key on the mac and drag it's going to duplicate that object so we're just going to duplicate the ground all through the room so that the ground fills the room. Now let's go ahead and run the game and see what this now looks like. So I have the game running here and if I press spacebar, you can see our player now falls down because of the gravity and when it touches the ground, it stops falling. So this looks pretty good. The last thing I'm gonna do is just, I don't want the ground to be visible and I'm just gonna go back to the ground object and then right here to the corner where it says visible, I'm gonna remove that so that it's not visible to our players. This is looking pretty good so far. So the next thing we want to do is add our bad character to the game. And like we did before, we're going to start by adding a sprite. And then I'm going to import this time around an animated sprite. So you can Im import an animated sprite in form of a GIF or an exported animated sequence. In my case, I'm using an exported animated sequence. If you've been following the channel, I exported this from character animator. So if I hit play right here, you're gonna see it's an animated sequence of the robot looking like it's walking. And again, I got this from Character Animator. So like we've done with the others, I'll go ahead and create an object for this and also assign the sprite to it and add it to the room and scale it properly to fit. And if I go ahead and play this, you're gonna see that it now has an animated sequence looking like the character is walking. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually make it move towards the player. All right, to make the robot move towards the player, it's quite simple. I'm gonna add another event, which is on the create event. So when the robot is created, I wanna add an action that says set direction. And it's this one right here. And I want it to move towards the left here, which is where our player is. So by default, it's actually not gonna move. It needs some kind of speed to actually make it start moving. So we're gonna set a default speed. There's an action called set speed. And I'm gonna give it a speed of about eight for it to start moving at a speed of eight. But I'm gonna do one more thing, which is I want the speed of the robot to continually increase as the game goes along to make it harder for our player to be able to keep along with the robot. And that is quite simple to do. I'm gonna add another event, which is called the step event right here. And what the step event does is our game currently runs at about 60 frames per second. So it means every second, whatever logic you put inside the step is going to run 60 times. So let me click on step. And again, I'm going to put the set speed action, but this time around, I'm going to put it to 0.01. I'm going to put relative. So it means every second it's going to add 0.01 
to the speed of the robot about 60 times because our step runs 60 times in one second. So let's go ahead and run this to see what it looks like. So as you can see, the robot now moves towards the player, but if you notice, it goes out of the room and never comes back. So we want to fix that and it's quite simple. In the step event, we're going to add another action which is called wrap and this tells it to wrap itself around the room. So whenever it goes out of the room, it's going to come back on the opposite side of the room and we can give it a little bit of a margin, maybe like 70 to account for the size of uh, the object itself. And let's run this one more time to see what it looks like. So now as you can see, it goes out of the room and comes back on the other side. And because of that step event we added, you're going to see it's going to keep getting faster as the game goes along. So one thing you would notice is that when the robot touches the player, nothing really happens. So let's fix that. And you probably by now already have an idea of what we're going to do. We're going to go to the robot and add a collision event. And this time around, we're going to say when the robot collides with the player object. I mean, you could do anything you want when the uh, bad player collides with the player. But in our case, we're just going to keep it very simple and we'll restart the game afresh from the beginning. So I'm going to use another action here that says restart game. And I'm going to just drop that in and have the game restart. So as you can see now, whenever the robot touches the player, the game restarts and you can see the robot goes back to the beginning. To make our game a little bit more interesting, we're going to add a scoring system to the game to actually give our players some incentive to keep playing the game. And our scoring system will be a very simple one. And the logic is just simply, as long as the game runs, we'll keep adding one point to the player until they hit a bad character and then our game will end there. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to start off by setting a nice font to display our score width. To add a new font, it's quite simple. Just head back to your asset browser. This time around, do create and choose font. This opens the font editor and you can go ahead and select whatever font you have your, on your computer, select a nice font size and whatever preference you want for it and click on OK. So once you've done that, the next thing you're going to do is go ahead and create another object. This time around, we're going to call it score. And once we have that object created, it doesn't need a sprite. Uh, we're going to use a new event this time around and it's an event called draw, which just helps to draw something on the screen. It could be any text. In this case, it's going to be our score. So I'm going to go ahead and add our draw event. All right, so we're first going to set the font, uh, assign the font to this, and there's an action called set font. So just click on that and drag it in and then click on the little icon right there to select the font we just created, which is font one in my case. And then the next thing we're going to do is actually draw our score. So there's an action that says draw score. So this draws the internal score in the game. And I'm just going to say use the relative position. So it draws it wherever we drop this object. So that's great. We have something that draws our score. So now we have to set up the mechanism that actually adds the score to the player. So I'm going to add a step event on this object. So we actually have an action that says set score and this action sets the score in the game. So I'll drag that in and I'll set the score to one relatively. So it means as the game continues, uh, it's going to keep adding one to whatever score the player has as long as the game lasts. Finally, I'm going to go to the room and then I'm going to drag that object and just drop it where I want it to display the score because we made it relative. It will draw the score wherever we drop the object. And let's run the game and see what it looks like. As you can see, we now have a score that increases as the game goes along. And whenever the bad player touches our player, you can see that the score resets back to zero because the game resets. The final thing we're going to do is add some sound design to make our game come alive even more. And to do that, it's quite simple. Again, you go to your asset browser and then under the sound folder, you can right click and click on create sound. Again, we're just going to rename that using a naming convention. And I'll start with my background music. And you can see that opening to the left. And then you can just click to select whatever music you have on your computer. And it takes certain different formats. Uh, right here at the top, if we play it, let's hear what that sounds like. We can just reduce the volume slightly so it's not too loud. So I'm going to go ahead and add one more sound. And this is the sound for jumping for whenever our player jumps. All right, now that we've imported our audios, let's go ahead and actually make them play in the game. There are several ways you can do this, especially for the background music, but I'm going to keep things simple and I'll add it to our player create event. So whenever our player is created, I'll just make it start playing the background music. So if we go back to our players create event, uh, there is an action that says play audio. So I'm just going to click that and drop it in. All right, and then I'm gonna select one of the audios we just put, and in this case, I'm gonna select the background music, and then I'm gonna make it loop, because we want it to continually play until the game ends. For the jump sound effect, 
um, I want it to play whenever the space bar is pressed. So I'm going to add another event. There's an event that actually listens for when the space bar is pressed. And this event runs only once, so it's not going to run continually. So I'm going to click on that event. And then again, I'm going to use the same play audio uh, action. And this time around, I'm going to select my jump sound. And I'm not going to ask it to loop because we want it to play just once. And that's it, folks. We have a game that is fully running. Now let's see how all of this comes together and how it looks like. To export your game, just select a target right here to the top right. Select whether you want it on Windows or whatever other platform you want to export it to. And once you're done with that, click right here on Create Executable. Select whether you want an installer or a zip file, and then you give it a name and save it, and you can share this with the world. And anyone else can install this on their computer. All right, that's all I had for you today. That was quite simple game that we created there, but also comprehensive. So you should have all the building blocks you need to create whatever kind of games you're trying to create. And if you do create a game, I would like to know and see it. So tag me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that is right here on the screen. And also in the description, I would like to see some of the things you have created. If you enjoyed this tutorial, the best way to tell me thank you is by hitting that thumbs up button. It goes a long way with helping me grow this channel. And if you want to see more tutorials like this and you're not yet subscribed, I do welcome you to subscribe subscribe, hit that red button down below and turn on the notification bell so you get notified when I create new content. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for stopping by. Keep learning. Bye-bye.